Hey there, friends. Welcome to the CFC Leadership Podcast, where we focus on everything campus ministry, college ministry, and young adult ministry related. Whether you're already working in one of these ministry areas, thinking about starting a ministry, or you just have a burden for this age group, this podcast is meant just for you. I'm your host, Kyle Austin, and now it's time to join with us in today's conversation. On this episode of our CFC Leadership Podcast, we'd like to give you some thoughts and ideas in regards to identifying and building leaders in young adult or college ministry. Now, why is it important that you and I produce leaders or focus on leader or leadership within our ministries? Well, it's because Jesus did. Also, Paul admonishes us or challenges us in 2 Timothy 2 2 to do just this thing. That verse says, And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall, who shall be able to teach others also. How many people are involved in this passage? Well, you have Paul, who is writing to Timothy, that Timothy is to pass on what he's received from Paul to those he taught, and then those that Timothy taught were to pass it on to to others. And so this is just this cycle that keeps going around and around and around. And so in order for you and I to build leaders, we first of all need to be able to identify the leaders in our ministry. So let me just give you a few thoughts here in regards to trying to identify who your leaders are in your ministry so you'll know who to pour into and who to begin building. Now, you could say there are three types of young adults or college students in our ministries. One writer broke it down into these three broad areas. You have the isolated, you have interested, and you have influencers. And I believe that really captures uh, the groups that you and I will see. You may could break it down even further. But as I think about the ministries that we have had the, the privilege to lead and the ministry where we're at now, I see isolated students and young adults. I see interested students and young adults and also influencers. And I'm sure as I say those words, somebody begins to come to your mind. We're talking about the isolated. We're talking about maybe those who are passive. Uh, It may just be their personality. They're more of an introvert. But it doesn't just mean it's based on their personality, uh, because you can have someone who is an introvert who is a very big influencer. But it can be uh, typical of that. Uh, it could be someone who's not super faithful. Maybe they just attend periodically. Maybe they don't participate as much, or, or if they do attend, they just kind of sit back quietly. These may be considered more of consumers, you know, what can you do for me type attitude, or it may just be because they're new to the whole thing. But this would be someone that we would refer to as isolated. Then you're going to have the interested group, and this is probably going to make up the bulk of your ministry. These are the ones that come faithfully but maybe they're not like super involved when you have the outreach events or you have things that you're going to do or trying to get involved in outside of the normal setting or normal time. These interested young adults or students have great potential. They're good people. Uh, Some of them could be fence riders or just kind of teetering, and they may need a little bit of guidance and help. Uh, But they will typically make up the bulk of your group, and these could easily become influencers if they're guided and encouraged. And then you think about influencers. These are those that are faithful. I think a, an attribute of an influencer is they're teachable. They automatically have a heart for God. And not just they were gifted with that, but they've developed that. They have a heart for God and for people. These influencers are interested in serving. Sometimes these, yeah, are the extroverts. They're just, their personalities are outgoing, but that's not always the case. These influencers want to do something, even though they may not know how or what to do. And so as we think about identifying our uh, leaders, think about your group that God's given you, no matter what the size is. Obviously, you could automatically think of some that are isolated. You think about the vast majority are interested, but who are your influencers? Because that's what we want to talk about keying in on is the influencers. And so take a moment and think through, or after you get through listening to this episode, evaluate your group and begin to identify what each person is. And don't, don't uh, get upset or frustrated if you say, well, look, I, I've got nothing but a group of isolated. Been there. You say, well, I've got 
mostly isolated and interested, but no influencers. No problem. We're going to work from interested out or isolated into interested, interested into influence. We're going to talk about that. Maybe you automatically identified some of those influencers. That's great. Uh, Praise the Lord that God has given you those, and we want to talk about that. So we've talked about identifying leaders in your ministry. Let's spend the rest of our episode talking about building those leaders in our ministries. Now, we have an example in Scripture, and Jesus gives that to us, and I would say it's Jesus' example of three. So Jesus had 12 disciples, right? We see him in in, out of all the people he could have chosen, he chose 12. Now, it's those 12 people that turn the world upside down. You and I realize we, as a believer in Jesus Christ, we sit here at this moment because of these 12 men. Because of what they did, minus one, though he was replaced, Judas uh, was replaced. But as you think about those 12 that Jesus walked with, he spent the most time with three. And then Scripture would even narrow it down even further and say there was one that he dearly loved. And so we have the 12 disciples, and then we have the three, uh, John, Peter, and James. They would spend an extra amount of time, more personal time with him. They would be on the Mount Mount of Transfiguration. And uh, so we see that he was using these men as leaders. So you maybe say the three were the influencers of the group. We obviously see Peter. He could not keep his mouth shut. Uh, He was the ring leader, if you will, of the group. But obviously John and James were as well. And so we see Jesus investing the most of his time into the influencers. And see, sometimes the default can be that those that are isolated, those that are interested, we say, okay, well, the influencers, and this was a, uh, something I had to learn, uh, maybe the hard way or something I had to kind of change my ministry model uh, as I was learning and growing and trying to, to see how to disciple and how to pour my life into others, because I would naturally gravitate towards those who were struggling, who maybe were not faithful, who I felt like could need some help and need him. And I was just expending a lot of energy because what I felt like is, okay, the influencers, you've got it. You're good. You don't need me. But that's the exact opposite of what Jesus is teaching us. We need to pour into the influencers because they will indirectly reach the interested and the isolated. You see, you and I multiply our efforts many times over as we follow Jesus' example of pouring into the influencers. So I have to ask the question, how did he invest into these men? Well, he spent more time in everyday life with them than really upfront teaching and preaching to them. Now, if we think we're going to get it all done in our 30 minutes or our hour setting of our Bible study time or our main group gathering, it's not going to happen like that. You see, they were built, these influencers were built doing real life together. So how did he invest into them? He did real life with them. Yeah, he did teach, he did preach, but the bulk of it was done on the everyday aspects of life. So think about this. Who are your three? Now, we're talking about, yes, looking in our group, identifying, you know, who is isolated, who is interested, who are our influencers. But as you navigate your ministry week in, week out, year in, year out, always have your three. You say, well, I only have three. There you go. You say, I have 20. Who are your three? And who other workers can you bring into your ministry so that they can have three? And always making sure somebody has those three. Yeah, you'll be working with more people. Jesus had the 12. But who are your three? Because that's who you want to focus in on. And I would encourage you to find the three influencers in your group or the two or the one, whatever you have. And you say, well, I don't have any influencers. Well, we're going to look to interested that we can bring over into influencers. But identify the three. And you and I should always be reevaluating and saying, who are my three? And if you have a leadership team, who are your three? To make sure we're not doubling up, that everybody's being covered. So these influ- the three that we have should be influencers or those interested you think can be un- influencers. Or you may say, look, I only have a couple and they're all isolated. No problem. I've been there. Right. And I, you can work very hard and some isolated, they're, they're just going to stay there. But I've seen with cultivating and encouraging 
and working with. You can bring an isolated over to interested and then interested over into an influencer. It's amazing. So focusing directly on the influencers will indirectly affect the interested and the isolated. If we're going to build leaders, you know, first of all, we need to follow Jesus' example of three. But then secondly, could I say this, major on spiritual growth and minor on entertainment. You see, college students or young adults can find entertainment anywhere. It's the spiritual growth element that is key. If we're going to build leaders, we have to focus on, we have to keep the main thing the main thing, and that is spiritual growth, growing in our faith. So the spiritual growth element is what will interest and keep this group growing, both spiritually and numerically. So as we major on spiritual growth, we're identifying our three. How are we as such busy, busy people? I don't know about you, but I'm busy. And I imagine you, and here we're talking about who are my three and spending more time. Where am I going to even come up with the time to do this? I'm already busy. I'm working. I've got family. I've got ministry obligations. I've got this going on. I've got class. I've got school, whatever it is. Can I say this? Do life and include them in it. We're not asking or saying or implying that you need to go crack open another two hours in your uh, 24-hour day to make it 26 hours. We understand time is limited and time is precious and your time is valuable. And that is why it is key to focus in on the influencers because you are multiplying your efforts. You're becoming more efficient because they'll indirectly reach the isolated and interested. So therefore, you are multiplying yourself over by focusing in on those influencers. But do life and include them in it because it's all about being efficient and making the best efficient and making the best use of your time. So what do you mean do life and include them in it? Well, if you have to do Yard work around your house. Do life and include them in it. You have to eat, right? I mean, you have to eat, right? There's no way around it. So if you have to eat lunch or dinners, eat and include them in it. Does your maybe you're a family and you have, your kids have games, sports, or things going on? Invite them to it. Maybe you love to watch wrestling or you love to watch basketball, uh, football, whatever it is. Well, grab an extra ticket. Invite them to it. You're doing life and you're including them in it. Don't necessarily neglect your family to do it if you are married or feel like you got to chart out all this other time. No, do what you normally do. Include them in it. And guess what? As you're doing that, it's life on life. It's what Jesus was doing. He was breaking bread. He was eating sandwiches. He was eating tacos. I mean, uh, he was doing real life with them. And as they walked down some of those gravel roads, questions would come up. And can I say this? As you do life and include them in it, it also includes you opening up, being real being transparent. Yeah, not the the fake Christian, not the one that can put on a mask and everything's grand. That's not what they're looking for. You know, if you really want to impact and build leaders, they need to understand the struggles that you face. They need to understand how you overcame those struggles, how you got victory. But they also need to know what the struggles were. They also need to know that it's real, that you have hard times and that how you've learned this and how you've navigated this. They need to know all that. Then lastly here, I would say this is we're going to build leaders in our ministry. We need to train and equip them while providing opportunities, opportunities to serve. So take time to teach students what it means to be a leader. Help them understand the responsibility that comes with leading others. I mean, it's not a small thing, but it's amazing to me as we work with college students and young adults, how many times they want to be a part of something bigger than themselves that they want to lead. I mean, you have to think about the students. They are going for higher level education. They are being challenged tremendously in the classroom. And we need to challenge them equally well. One, uh, Faith for Exiles is an excellent book put out by the Barna Group. And they had a little excerpt that said this. It says, the church is one of the least demanding environments for young people. In terms of what they are asked to do mentally and emotionally and of what is expected of them when it comes to serving and giving. Yet, one of the most hopeful findings in our research is this. Young, exemplar Christians are more willing to be challenged than the church is willing to challenge them. And so this book focuses on, you know, we talk about all the time those that drop out. Barnum Group's released a lot of research about that, and we need to understand that. But then they focused in on this book, Faith for Exiles, back in 2019. 
to what about the 30 or 36 percent? What about those that stayed? And then what about that small percentage that just stayed faithful in church and are just serving? Why did they stick? What are they looking for? And that's what this this, uh, book is about. And so it says there, we're not challenging them enough. And went on to say this, we need to teach critical thinking, how to evaluate and understand propaganda, fake and real, truth and post-truth, worldview and theology, and so much more. We should offer classes and courses and seminars on all sorts of topics tailored to the pressures and questions of young Christians uh, that they're actually experiencing. And what I'm trying to say is, yes, we need to challenge them in our Bible study groups. It's okay to give homework. It's okay to hold them accountable. So many times we're fearful that if we're going to hold somebody accountable, or did you do this, or we give them something to read ahead of time, that they're, we're, we're going to scare them away. Like, we don't need to do that. But man, the world's doing it so they can learn all this other stuff. Why not you and I as believers? I mean, how, when you think about it, how ridiculous does that sound? But we just feel like, okay, we can give them our 30-minute little lesson, and that's okay if they don't do anything with it. No, let's help them to be accountable. Why? Because they're looking for that. And also because being a leader, being an influencer, requires responsibility. It requires accountability. And so allow the influencers to give ideas and to try to use their ideas. You know, you're trying to plan your calendar. You're trying to come up with things to do. Well, guess what? Allow them to throw out the ideas. And use some, or maybe some are one, maybe too far off base. Well, narrow it in so that it fits the scope and the mission of your ministry. But at the same time, make sure you train and equip the students for the various roles they will fulfill. We can't throw them out to the wolves, so we need to make sure we're able to guide them, lead them, train them, but allow them to give ideas. Because guess what? If it's their idea they're going to be a whole lot more eager to get other people involved. They're going to be a whole lot more motivated to make sure it doesn't flop. When it's your idea and you're trying to draw them into it, right? They could care less because you're right. It's riding on you. It's not riding on them. But when they give the idea and they have to put the heart, the labor, the sweat into it, and you're guiding and helping, of course, man, they just get so much more involved. And I think the hard thing is with establishing leaders, you know, you and I want to lead, we want to be a part of everything, but we have to step back and we have to let them lead. And so sometimes that can get messy because they may drop the ball and we're worried, well, now it's going to look bad on us. No, that's part of leading and producing influencers and giving them the opportunity to serve so that they can really serve. Even if it does not come out perfect, guess what? They're learning to lead. And they're learning to live out their faith. It will be okay. Just take the opportunity while they're leading to praise them where you can. And then, of course, make any needed suggestions or corrections as you go along. Don't be afraid to correct because this is part of teaching. This is part of the goal of building leaders. Just make sure we do it in the right spirit and the right tone of voice. So we're talking about building leaders and many of these influencers that you are identifying or interested, you're trying to get out to be influencers. They want to be a cha- They want to be challenged. They want to have opportunities to serve. They want to have opportunities to give their ideas. And guess what? Many times they come up with better ideas than I can. Sometimes you may have to maybe just kind of hone it in a little bit or just kind of na- uh, navigate some various ways. But many times they have better ideas about how to reach their generation than I do. Because I'm many years disconnected in comparison to them. So what happens if we don't identify and build the influencer? Like, what's going to happen to our ministry? Well, can I say this? If we do have influencers, they can easily get bored and they can find somewhere else to serve. And then at the same time, you and I are missing a golden opportunity to pour into the lives of those that can pour into the lives of others. Remember, this is a Collegians for Christ, basically a purpose statement or purpose verse, if you will. It goes along with our mission statement. But is this the same commit thou to faithful men? What you've heard of me, said Paul, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. So everybody we're working with, everybody that we're discipling, we're leading, we want them to be able to teach others also, that they may be able to teach others also, and that they may be able to teach others also, and it just keeps going and going and going. So as we wind down here, think about this. Who are your isolated? Who are your interested? Who are your influencers? Identify them, and then narrow that down. 
Who are your three? Who are you going to spend the bulk of your time with? Who are you going to pour into? Who are you going to make sure you're doing life on life with them? You're doing life and you're including them in that. And as you identify those people, pour your life into them and give them the opportunities that they need to rise up to the opportunity to put feet on their faith and to make an impact in this world. Thank you for taking the time to listen. If this podcast has been helpful to you, we would love for you to share it with a friend or subscribe so that you can stay up to date on the latest studies. You can connect with Collegians for Christ online for more information and resources at cfccampusministry.com.